and thank you for tuning in to the pod of Born to be a Star. Today is hump day. It's the middle of the week where you know there's only two more days left till you get to Friday, then the weekend, then I guess you're catching up on all your shows like we are, but we're trying to spread out watching during the week and the weekend too, so we're not so over-consumed by trying to watch everything at once. Boy, it's a great day, man. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Um, What is there to complain about? Uh, I woke up today with 10 fingers, 10 toes. I can see. I can hear. I can speak. I can taste. So I don't have anything to complain about. Uh, Although I am going to be doing complaining, but that's going to be in the next segment of the podcast. So I'm going to hold off from complaining until I get to that part. But... Let's take this time to look at our reflections in the mirror. Let's take this time to recognize who we are. Let's take this time to recognize our star power, recognize we can just about do anything we put our minds to. When the world wants to tell you what you can't do and stop you from attempting to achieve your goals or be successful or accomplish something, tell it to suck suck it or kick rocks and keep moving. The world is always going to tell you what you can't do because the world is scared of what you can do. Each person has the ability to do amazing things. And if everybody is doing amazing things, then how are these pathetic people going to stay in power? How? Because if we're stars and, and we're igniting the world with positivity and happiness, and they're not stars, and they're igniting the world with negativity and hopelessness, there's no competition. You win automatically. Your reflection is a mirror is that stopping them from their corruption. Who am I talking about? The bad guys. We have to beat the bad guys. And we can beat the bad guys by looking at our reflections in a mirror, by telling ourselves, yes, we can. We can beat the bad guys by continuing to get up and a giving out the positivity, even if we don't want to, putting a smile on our faces, being happy for no reason. <coughs> That is how you beat them. So moving in from that part of the conversation to the next part of our conversation. Let's get into politics. With no media allowed, no media allowed, no media allowed. They lie to us, they lie to us anyway. So as I told you yesterday, I removed myself from the Young Turks and Majority Report. Um, Looks like I still get the Young Turks on, um, what is it called? Um youtube or whatever so i get to see like what they're posting but i removed myself from their email list um honestly though how's this gonna work when you have a group of people that are progressives and they think they're right about everything but they're not and how's this gonna work when they're a minority not the majority but they keep making decisions in with the with the biden administration like they're the majority They're never going to win presidency, ever. You know why they're not going to win presidency? Because their ideas aren't seen. They're just... We live in a capitalistic society, and I know they might not like that, but that's just too damn bad. That means you can make as much money as you want or as little money as you want. And I'm tired of people feeling bad for people that don't necessarily need that Everyone is given the same opportunity. So I don't want to hear that some people have it worse than others because that's not true. Everyone is given the same opportunity. You can graduate from high school. You can go to college. You can go to the army. You can get a job or you can have seven kids and and you can sell drugs or you can become a prostitute. You can become a pimp. You can do things that are illegal. You can be a bad guy. You can be a good guy. You can go to college and become a lawyer. You can become a teacher. You can become a salesman. You can basically do anything you want with your life. And even as you start to get older, that's not a reason for you not to do it. You can, at a a certain point in your life, go get your master's. You can decide you want to switch things up in your career. You can switch things up in your career and then decide you hate it and then do something else. That's called being an adult. But you know what's not adulting? Telling people that they don't have shit to do and that they can sit in the fucking house all day and not do anything. How's that adulting? And you're going to pay them for it? You're going to give them a universal basic income for nothing? But guess what? Somebody has to pay for that. Just like their shitty idea about med for all. Someone has to pay for that too. The reason medical 
options are linked to your employer is because that's how you pay for it directly. Anything outside of that, I just don't see it. Like, what are we talking about? And they can't conclusively explain anything to me or anyone else. I have a conservative values. I believe in God and Jesus, as you already know, and anyone can believe in whatever they want. I'm not saying you're better or less better if you don't believe in what I do. I, I don't like the whole church thing that wants to make people feel like they're in a cult or they're not good enough to be in the cult. I'm not about that. I love God in my own way. I, I don't think that requires me to go to a church. I don't think that requires me to be a part of a flock or sheep. I think I can love God the way I want to. And I and I think that's the way that's supposed to be. It's really sad the, that the progressive message is only for one minute group of people people that can't figure it the fuck out how do you live in the united states of america and you're born free as an american and you can't figure things out if i can go to college graduate why can't you if i can make a certain amount of money why can't you if i can podcast and and be a pet mom and and be a grown-up and and go grocery shopping and do things like that and find things that i like and live my life why can't you what's your excuse for not doing anything why do we keep giving people excuses to be losers and to be loafs living off of the dime of somebody else sucking on the tit of the government there's no way to excuse that COVID-19 was an excuse for Democrats to give money away like it was burning paper so they could get people to be on their side when they go for re-election. That's all it was. It was a tactic for them to remain in power. But I got to tell you, Nancy Pelosi is failing. And the only reason January 6th happened is because of her ass. Okay, let's point that out. She had a lot to do with January 6th. She's the person in power. If she really thought something was going to happen, why didn't she do anything? I know it's far easier for them to just blame Trump for everything because that's their scapegoat. But they don't have anything else to talk about other than Trump. That's why they're continuing this ridiculous shit about January 6th. They have been talking about this since it happened. And if they didn't do anything right away when it happened, what makes them think that making a decision to do some shit about it now is going to be conclusive or help? What's wrong with you people? You need to wake up and smell the reality. You smell. All of you fucking people smell. Not only do you smell, but you're old and elderly. So you all belong, belong in like a an elderly home or some shit. Like you're making cognitive decisions for people that disagree with everything you're saying. And it it has to end. It, it needs to be over. She needs to be removed from power. Um, I don't think they should allow... Uh, Biden to run again for presidency because he's a nightmare and what's the backup plan here is the backup plan going to be Hillary I killed a lot of people Clinton or or is it going to be some other shroom like it didn't work when they had Hillary when she lost really badly like and they cried about it for a long time too and I know they want to point, point out that Republicans cry about everything but honestly when you look at the numbers and you look at the situation How can you have ballots and you're counting ballots as votes? The way they're trying to convince people to vote at home, the only people that should have the ability to vote by mail is people that are in, that are volunteering that work for the voting thing. And like elderly people or people that have to be at court. There has to be a reason why you're voting at home. Not just because the Democrats want to lie about how many people are voting for them. Because that's exactly what they did. We have to hold the government accountable. And if we're not doing that, then they're just going to continue to lie and cheat and scheme. And the taxpayers, the middle class, are going to continue to pay for it by not by us not being able to get what we rightfully deserve. I want to be far away from the government, okay? I think the government is just a blundering bunch of fucking idiots. I'm just going to say that. All all candidacy removed. I don't have anything nice to say about them because I can't think about anything that's actually happened to me that's good from Democrats. Obama, he just made up shit, okay? 
What did he do good for me? I don't know. Granted, I was a kid before him, so I guess I wasn't really paying attention to politicians before that. But um, what are these people that are claiming they're so good and so brave and they have the answers for everything going to do for us? Because what have they done? I do believe the past can help with the future with the prediction of what's going to happen next. They're not going to do anything. They're going to fatten their wallets, fatten their bank accounts, hide money in some fucking bank somewhere else across the world, and lie and scheme and cheat. They're catching these governors and these people running for positions that are taking money away from the places they're supposed to represent. They're full of shit. What happened in Arizona? Bullshit. What happened in Texas? Bullshit. Them claiming that those children getting killed in Texas is the governor's fault? Bullshit. You can't get a weapon away from a psychotic person. They're going to find some way to do what they're doing. The problem isn't the weapon. The problem is the people. And the people is the problem. So that needs to be solved in a different way. Like, today, I just want to bring up all these things so you're fully aware of what's going on and, and, and you're translucent in seeing that they need to be removed from power. Gas is over $5 now and food just keeps rising. I told you the other day, like, you're going to get something to eat. You're spending at least $25, it's $25 for one person to eat and it's like 50 and up for two people. That's reality now. Unless you're on the dollar menu at McDonald's, which a lot of us are going to have to start going back to because this shit's ridiculous. I'm just going to say it. It is. It's ridiculous. For me and Skip to eat at McDonald's, we're talking about $18 for us to both get, like, if we were both getting meals. But if we're getting, like, off the dollar menu, then we could both probably get two McDoubles, split a fry. We could maybe get, like, a split of 20 piece. We're talking about, like, $10. We're going to have to get back to that. Things are not going the way that they said they would go to. And Janet yelling is a fucking moron. Biden admitting he didn't think this was going to happen with inflation. What does he think is going to happen? Like, how are these people in power? They're elderly. They don't know what's going on. And they have no logical train of thought. I'm concerned about America. We need to get them out of power as soon as possible. The Senate needs to remain broken away from the moron that's the vice president. And I gotta be on the side of um, Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema. Um, I'm I'm 100% on their side. I'm so happy that they're actually representing the states that they work for in a way that doesn't allow the Democrats to just do stupid shit. I hope Build Back never never returns. And I don't want to hear about shit that makes no sense. The reason why we have a ridiculous inflation number that's at like 15% right now is because they kept giving shit away during COVID. COVID isn't going away. I've been saying this for a long time. We're living with COVID. It's like the flu. It's this. It's not the same type of like ailment, but I, we're going to have to consider it like the flu and we're going to have to consider it like AIDS. Like the treatments might not completely cure it but there's a vaccination that you could take for it we're living with it it's not going away if you're traveling if you have somebody that you love that's over the age of i don't know 60 you're gonna have to take precautions for their life moving on from that because i don't want to talk about shitty biden all day because i can't fucking stand him and i know you can't either let's move on to something better thank you for tuning into this wednesday version of no media allowed no media allowed no media allowed because they lie to us they lie to us anyway all they do is lie and we need to hold them accountable all these shitty ass people that claim they're journalists or these news stations that claim they're giving the truth and they're not we need to hold them accountable let's boycott all of them if we the people the majority of the people do not look at clinton news network or CBS, or or MSNBC, or any of these ridiculous ass stations, maybe not even really Fox, although Fox doesn't have anything to worry about. If we ignore them, they're doomed. Because no one cares about the news like that. The only time they want to post about, and I gotta be the bearer of bad news about the shooting in Uvalde, Texas, 
People die every day from guns and knives and bombs. And shit happens every day to people in different places, in different towns, in different states, in Texas, in New York, in Montana, in California, wherever you can fucking think of, in New England, in Boston, in Maine, wherever. It happens every day, right? Let's not pretend like Uvalde and all these things that are happening are a shocker. They're not her. So, don't fall for it. Moving on to the next part of our conversation. Removing denial. I kind of feel like this conversation kind of matches up with what I was just talking about. If you take out the fact that people will lie to their own benefit, and you take out the fact that you really have to be careful who you're trusting, you're removing the denial of pretending like a bad thing can't happen. It's important that we're truthful with ourselves, we're honest with ourselves, and we're fully aware of life. Life is understanding that not perfection is probably non-existent and that things are going to happen. It's also realization that sometimes people can't be trusted and things happen. We have to be extremely careful and we have to be extremely aware of the fact that people lie, cheat, scheme, and do horrible things for their benefit, especially politicians, especially really anybody that's trying to get power. Like people at jobs, like managers, will say anything to try to have themselves be the... the one who wants sympathy like they're they're the victim people always want to be the victim of everything oh this happened to me oh i'm so sad oh blah 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 how can you possibly be the victim of everything at what point are you not the victim like that's what i mean by removing denial people can't always be the victim of everything that's not that's not smart i'm just saying anyways outside of that the victimhood thing let's think about all the other things the now can be used to force you to think something that's a lie is true Uh, in relationships in friendships and anything honestly denying yourself reality that you're not going to be good at that or that's not working out or you're driving too far for this or you need to get a new car or you need to move or this relationship is tarnishing your your mind or you probably need to get on a peloton and lose some weight or you're gonna have to stop doing things or you're going to have to stop doing that. It's not good for yourself. You have to take some sort of responsibility as an adult, as a person. And you can't constantly just blame other people for things or be mad or angry at people about stuff. It's not going to get you anywhere. And it's not going to solve anything. Anger doesn't do anything. So... Removing denial is the first step. And then being honest and truthful with yourself is the second step. Living in truth means you're not worried about things. means you're okay with life. And why isn't that good? Thoughts, right? Okay, moving on to the next part of our conversation. Summer wins. I'm hoping this is a good summer and it doesn't rain all the time. The sun stays out and it's nice living in New England. You never know. The weather is like, I don't know. It's really unpredictable. So one day it's one thing and one day it's another. I feel like we've been in the dark with um, the weather, especially coming into the spring um, from the winter. It was just so dark and gloomy and um, 
there's really less of the of nice weather in New England, especially where we live. It's more so, it's colder, longer than it's hotter. Like, I think we only get June, July, and really August for, like, spring or summer. And then it's back to cold again in September. So it's kind of sad, but, I mean, that's how it goes in New England. And at this point, we're used to it. So I do like the fact that we do have seasons, though. That That's nice to reflect on. Um, again, you just want the weather to be nice so you can have plans, so you can go to the park, so you can go out for lunch, so you can do fun things, so you, you can take part in all the fun events that are happening in the state you live in, and so you can try new restaurants and maybe eat outside or eat inside, so you can do a bunch of things that are fun and entertaining, and who doesn't want to do that, right? Who doesn't really want to enjoy those amazing things that I just said? I mean, I don't know. But I do think weather has a lot to do with it. Like, if it's raining and it's cloudy and you're scroggy, probably no one's going to want to do anything. It really sets such a trend of, I feel lazy. But if 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 it's sunny, then it, it might set a trend of, let's try this, let's do this, let's do that. I'm just saying, it, it's good to have options. Right? Right. Um, outside of the fact that we want more sun and we want more fun, what do we think about... weekday wondering and what do I mean by that I mean like should you be trying to catch up with like your list of things to do during the week especially if you work full-time and then you're trying to do things after or should you be saving that to the weekend I feel like sometimes my idea is I want to wait to the weekend to like do errands and stuff but sometimes that doesn't work out it depends on what the errand is and where I'm going to be near to do it I feel like we need to be very careful with the idea that we're waiting to do things because that can backfire on us. You might say, oh, I'm going to wait to Friday to do this. And Friday comes and you're busy or you have a meeting and you can't leave or you have to Zoom with somebody and blah, 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 blah. Like, don't put off tomorrow, today for tomorrow. Like, don't think you're going to have time in the middle of the week to do something that maybe you're not going to have time to do. I know it's easier to say that, but so I think I think we have to think differently because weekday wondering might be better than weekend I can't do anything. So, just saying, I think we have to sort of spread everything out accordingly that works in a good way. Moving on to the next part of our conversation, gardening is gardening important do we need gardens like that do we want to buy houses so we can create our own gardens are are we okay with condos and we can look at flowers from a distance and we don't own it i feel like gardens are work man like i want to be better at this but like how and like i want things to be great but like what does that mean these are questions I have. Like, I like flowers, but do I want to be the one planting all of them and going to, like, Home Depot or Lowe's and picking them out, spending all that time and dedication doing it? Honestly, I don't know. Does that sound some, like something I would want to do? Possibly. Maybe yes. Am I going to do it? To be decided. That's the thought process there. All right. Moving on from the fact that I don't know if I want to plant flowers. Do you want to plant flowers? We'll get into that later. Let's get into watching. So... Like, we caught up with all the episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Very good. Um, I wish Disney would do more with Star Wars. Like, I, I'm still not happy with Disney, but this show is fairly good. And, and we do love Star Wars. I mean, I definitely love Star Wars. I love the idea that something's happening. And there's a big conglomerate, like, government size situation trying to stop Obi. There's stormtroopers everywhere. Like, they are really going after anyone that wants free thought. And it's kind of a resemblance of the world we live in. The government is constantly trying to stop anyone with free thought. And they want everyone to be a robot to just follow along with whatever chaos they're ensuing upon our lives. But that doesn't work. So I really feel like Star Wars is a connection of 
you know, a future beyond the future that we can't cur- currently see where we're going to still be fighting in spaceships. And I, and I said to Skip, like, honestly, the reason why I came up with Born to be a Star is because of my obsession with Star Wars. Also because I believe stars ignite the world and because I believe that we are an illumination of light and that illumination of light is in control of everything. Hence, Star Wars. But, it's probably why I like Starbucks too. Um, But, I do think they're doing a phenomenal job with that show. I wish they were doing more with Marvel, but who knows. Moving on to Netflix. So we've been catching up with Peaky Blinders and the last season of that came out this month. And I don't know how I feel about that. I like Peaky. I like Tommy. You know, I like um, my British shows, especially those that are in London doing London things. You know, um, it's very upsetting that shows I like go off, but I understand they can't stay on forever. And you don't want something to stay on forever and lose its value. So while I'm upset it's ending, I totally understand. Um, It's just another show I'm going to miss, just like I'm going to miss Ozark, just like I'm going to miss Stranger Things when that finally goes off. Um, All of Us Are Dead is renewed for a season two. Cannot wait to watch that. The first season was crazy, but it primarily took place in the school. So we're going to have to see what happens with the rest of that. Um, I think they're renewing that other show, um, the Chinese show, uh, where they were playing that game for a second season too but I don't know when that's coming out um so we'll have to wait and see I'm hoping that that show about the woman next door with the door comes out with another season two because that did that was very good um that was another quick watch um outside of those I think Handmaiden's Tale is coming on but I haven't ventured into that yet I honestly haven't really been looking at Hulu like that I can't give you any update on Shudder because the last couple things they had were not that great. But, you know, it's just some horror movies are good and some horror movies aren't good. We'll see what happens. Um, That's kind of it for watching things right now. Outside of that, looking at normal everyday shows, still obsessed with Spongebob for now until forever. There's the uh, the Star Show, the Patrick Show, which is kind of cute. I really don't know, like, what the theme of Nickelodeon is right now some of the shows are okay and some of the shows stink so like they gotta be very careful I suppose moving on from that um let's get into food so this week I decided to make seafood pasta because it's my obsession and I can't help it so uh shrimp crab meat and scallops make your own sauce you use heavy cream sour cream cream cheese and hot sauce and mozzarella that's how you make your own sauce and I mean if you want to be lazy you could just buy your own alfredo but I like making my own sauce myself it just tastes better and it gives more flavor also you want to season the seafood before you cook it but you have to lightly cook it. You can't cook it fully or it's going to lose that delicacy. I'm obsessed with seafood. Um, if I had enough time in the day, I'd be eating more lobster. But I don't. So, who knows? Um, you know I'm obsessed with seafood Um, I was considering getting like skewers to put like chicken on it and other things on it to make like maybe Hawaiian skewers or just to get creative with grilling especially because it's summer now but we'll see what happens no clue Um, we've been drinking a lot of like not soda drinks more like teas or like juices like the juice mixes and we've been trying different flavors and they're very good like there's the sun kiss one there's a peach raspberry there's a grape 
there was a grape one there's a mango tango there's so many different options i'm not saying i don't like soda i do i do want to get more i want to get back into drinking more soda stream because i feel like my soda stream is just sitting there and i really i really love soda stream so we'll see what happens with that anyways guess what it's the end of this Wednesday podcast. Thank you for tuning in as always to Born to be a star. And don't forget, you are a star wherever you are. And may the force be with you, star. May you continue to do amazing things. Let nothing stop you. And the enemy is always going to be on your tail and trying to tell you what you can't do. But if we can fight together, then we can win together. This is going to be our victory on the other side of everything. Positivity will always get you through the bad and there's always sunshine in the rain that's what rainbows are for i invite you i encourage you i want to inspire you to be a star and illuminate your life your light and life to everything around you i want to thank you for tuning in to this wednesday pod and i will see you back here same place same time tomorrow on thursday to tell you more great things about great things